We use coins. Dot com. Space is a vital need too for new downtown stores. Here's an historical observation I, I, I had never noticed before. It seems like America's most famous economic booms have always occurred, tended to occur, as the government was contracting. Usually this would be right after the end of a major war. Uh, for example, the uh, 1870s after the Civil War, uh, that was a very prosperous time for Americans and a deflationary period. And there was the uh, 1920s, which was, I think, more of a, a, I mean, that was partly, I think, because of drawing down after World War I, but also it was artificially spurred on by the Federal Reserve's creation of easy credit. Then there was the 1950s after World War II and the 1990s after the Cold War. You know, I wonder if that could mean the eventual end of the terror war will uh, result in an economic boom. But anyway, my theory, just instinctively, is that what probably happens is, you see, pe people can handle small growth in government because they have time to adjust to it. What really damages an economy is if, an, if a government grows faster, faster than the economy can adjust. So that phenomenon is, is present in magnified form when you have, oh, I know, say, you know, for instance, a 1943 situation where the Americans for years are continuing to adjust to continuing, continuing expansions in government. They're getting better and better at dealing with it. And finally, it, it gets to its apex and then starts shrinking. So after 1945, there was a drawdown. I believe that may have actually been the single most uh, uh, shrinking period of government in American history. That period, I guess, between you know, 1945, 1947. Well, Americans had become very used to dealing with government. And when that restriction was taking, taken off of them to some extent. It was kind of like loosening a spring, you know, letting go of a spring after tightening it down or pushing it down. It resulted in, I think, unprecedented economic growth. In the 90s, it was a more subtle affair where you had simply a, a reduction in the amount or the rate of government growth, partly as a result of the end of the Cold War, but partly as a result of gridlock. There was also gridlock in the 1950s because you had a divided government. I don't know about the 1870s and the 1920s. Now, can any of you name a period in American history that saw greater economic growth than those decades? I'm thinking there may not have been one. And this phenomenon may not repeat itself at the end of the terror war because I suspect the end of the U.S. terror war will be a little bit more like the end of the Ottoman Empire or the end of the British Empire. Flying from Cyprus, English and French paratroopers lead a joint air-sea assault against Port Said at the canal's northern end. The troopers leap out into Egyptian Akak. Where you had a, a con contracting effect. Certainly it was an economic disaster to some extent for the Britons, even though they did need to get rid of their empire economically, they still suffered afterwards. I don't really know what the numbers were in Turkey, but uh, you know, you look at the Soviet collapse, the Yugoslav collapse, those, those, neither of those were accompanied by uh, good economic times, and it may be so for the Americans. I think <clears throat> when you've seen most of these booms has been after the successful conclusion of a war. Again, I'm looking at history uh, as, a, as a person looks at a forest. I don't really see a whole lot of trees. I'm not detailed enough to think that way, but uh, it's just an observation that occurred to me that I'd never heard mentioned anywhere else. Bitcoins, the world's first practical internet cash. A nightmare for governments to try and control. Inflation and counterfeit resistant. They return you some control over your money and a new measure of anonymity. A lot cheaper to use than PayPal, you can use them to buy tax-free cigarettes and almost anything else. I accept Bitcoins, so can you. Get started at WeUseCoins.com.